Good morning everyone. Today we're going to talk about how I store all my footage because nearly every video I shoot gets stored on a hard drive and then later I can use the footage for something else or I can review it again. So I try to store everything that I shoot but having lots of loose hard drives like this it's not ideal. Yes I can put them individually into the reader but very fast you start forgetting which hard drive did I put it on you can lose data there's no redundancy so if one of your drives goes bad well you're out of luck there's no backup right so loose drives like this is not the answer what I'm using instead is a network attached storage device from Synology now this was actually given to me well over a year ago for free and I've been using it but I just never made a video about it. If we take off the front here what you'll see is there are two drives. Now it doesn't have to be two drives there are also four drives, eight drives, there are like various different versions. Actually I've outgrown this. Two drive bay is not big enough for me but for most people it's it's really good enough. So I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can take a look. There's not too much to see. Now, apart from the fact that this is from Synology, the drives inside are from Seagate. And these were also given to me. For example, this is a four terabyte Iron Wolf drive. Now, the nice thing about having Synology with Iron Wolf is that they've cooperated with each other, coordinated, so the hardware and the software can talk to each other. So if something's going wrong, the idea is that the Synology will tell you much sooner because the Iron Wolf has additional data that it shares with Synology, uh, things like vibration sensors, for example. So you should get an early warning if your drive is going bad. Now I mentioned earlier about backup or redundancy. Now you might say, well, if you have two drives in here and one is six terabytes, the other is six terabytes, that means you have 12 terabytes of storage, right? No. Well, it could be, but that's not the way I run it. The way I run it is a RAID 1. So the data is actually duplicated. So both drives have the exact same data. The good thing about that is let's say this drive goes bad. Well, I can pull this out replace it with a new drive, put it in, it will replicate the data again automatically so I don't have to do anything and then I have a backup again so if one of the drives goes bad you just swap it out. So that's the idea of these like RAID setups is you have this redundancy or backup because let's imagine you have a four terabyte drive, you put all your data there and then something goes wrong what are you going to do? You've lost all your data. You can't put everything, you know, they say don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put all your data on one drive and think, oh, that's going to be good enough. It won't be. If you have important data like I do, you need to make sure you're using, I'm throwing this around like it's a toy. It's not plugged in at the moment, um, but I should be a little bit more careful with these hard drives. But I'll tell you an interesting story. Uh, well, I'll tell you two interesting stories. One, my previous NAS, which came before the Synology got blown up by Miralco like, I don't know, a month ago. So that's dead. The good thing is the hard drives survived. So I was able to put them in the new NAS. A little bit of hassle because of different brands, but I was able to do it. And then the second story is, this is absolutely ridiculous, but this was sitting on top of a shelf. Uh, how tall? Around six foot. And then somehow it got pulled off the shelf, smashed to the floor. So a six foot drop. Thankfully, the NAS is still okay and the hard drives are still okay. And that's while it was running. Didn't even have any corrupt data. So these drives are really in a class of their own. Now I do have other drives. Let me have a look here. Okay, so these are the drives that I used to use before. They're also from Seagate but this is the Barracuda 2 terabyte, and this is actually meant for a desktop computer. So what's the difference between desktop computer and something like this, which is designed specifically for a NAS? Well, desktop computer, you run it, let's say eight hours a day, you turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. The NAS, you run 24 hours a day. You never turn this off, it's always operating. So your hard drive is going to go through a lot more runtime, right? So you need stronger components, you need, basically it's just better built. It's designed to run permanently. Aside from the extra sensors inside and things like that that are meant to give it, you know, a longer lifetime. Uh, depending on the specific drive you buy, it might also include free data recovery, uh, which could be very, very 
you know very good especially for commercial users if you're storing something that's really really valuable that data recovery could be useful and we're not talking about software yes they can do software but they can actually do hardware data recovery which would involve opening the drive maybe they're going to replace the pcb or there's some kind of i don't know something with the platters like it can get really technical so having that included with the drive is important now i've realized I've gone off on a tangent about hard drives and I haven't even explained the benefits or the purpose of a NAS. So if we take a close look at the unit itself, this is the little cover and you'll see it's got these rubber bumpers here. That's to help with any vibrations that you might have from your drives and that just slots between the two drives. On the front we have a USB port. Now you might be thinking, oh that's where you connect it to your computer wrong this isn't like an external drive that you connect via usb this connects to your router so you'll see it has an ethernet jack one gig gigabit on the back and then another two usb ports plus an eSATA, which would be interesting for some people so the idea is you plug this into your nas and then you access it either wirelessly or through your wired network that means things like your cell phones can access the data or back up your cell phones to the NAS. And that's actually what I'm doing. So anyone who has an Android or Apple cell phone can be connected to this through their app from Synology and then their photos, their videos automatically backed up over Wi-Fi. So you don't even have to think about it. If I lose this cell phone tomorrow, well, I'll be sad, obviously, but my photos, my videos, uh, you can choose other stuff to back up also, will be on here automatically. It's always backing up over Wi-Fi. So that's a really useful feature. So I'll take a bunch of random photos. Now remember, this could be multiple people living in the same home and uh, everyone with their own cell phone. Now we'll open the Synology app. It says backing up photos, 12 photos remaining. And once it gets started, it's very fast. See, nine, eight, seven. And not only can it do your photos, but also your videos. So very nice to have that auto backup feature. Now, aside from the apps on your phone, this is how you're going to interact with your NAS through the browser. So this is Chrome. If we open the file station, we can have a look at the photos that were just backed up from my cell phone. So there you go. And we can look through all of the different photos very simple to use now all of those photos look kind of similar but there are different pictures that have been stored so if this isn't for connecting to your computer the usb port what is the point of it well it's to connect external devices like a usb card reader let's imagine i've just shot my day's videos it's about 20 gigabytes depending on you know how long the day was i can plug my card reader in here and then it's got a little button c copy automatic so plug in my SD card reader, press copy, it will automatically load all the files onto the drives. One thing I would say is if you're going to buy something like this, or even if you're going to use external drives, make sure you enable encryption. Because let's say you've got, I don't know, four terabytes, eight terabytes of data, and then someone steals this, as in they physically break in and steal your unit, you don't want them having access to your data. You don't want them to remove the drive, plug it into a computer and read all your stuff, right? So make sure you enable encryption. It's an option on the Synology. So all your data is gonna be safe even if it's physically stolen. Now, another thing that you can do with these, uh, I've got a prop here, is that you can set it up to record from your network cameras. So you have network cameras inside your home or maybe outside your home, maybe your business. Well, instead of buying a dedicated DVR, you can use this. So not only can you store all your files on there, but it can also connect your IP cameras, your network cameras. This, this one. one here can work over ethernet or Wi-Fi. So it will actually archive all of the footage onto here. And if you want, you can set up so it only records when there's motion detected. Uh, it can depend on the camera you're using, but that's another feature that this can do. So it's not just for backing up your files. It can do a lot more. Although the one thing that I should mention is that when you're buying your NAS, check how many cameras it supports because it might only come with a license for two or four cameras and you may have to pay extra if you want to connect say six, eight or 12 cameras. So that's something you have to be aware of. 
Now earlier I gave you a tip about encrypting your drives on your NAS. There's another tip I want to give you, which is connect it to a UPS, something like this from APC. Now, if you can afford it, I recommend buying a smart UPS that comes with a USB cable. The reason for that is the Synology can actually understand what's going on with your battery backup. So you plug this into the front of the Synology NAS, and when you lose power in your home, the battery backup would tell the Synology, hey, the power's gone out, shut down. You have 10 minutes, you have 15 minutes, whatever. So it will automatically shut itself down. And I've tested this. I've pulled the wire out of the wall. The NAS continued running. Then the APC battery backup told this, hey, we've lost power, shut down. It shut itself down gracefully. So you don't have any danger of losing data because if you have disks that are spinning, then suddenly they lose power. It's not good for the hard drive. So if you can afford it, buy a smart UPS that will automatically shut down your NAS if you lose power in your home. Now, there are so many other things that you can do with a NAS because it's running 24 seven and the operating system that this has, it's so advanced compared to like a decade ago. These are more like a mini computer, a mini Linux computer. You can have this downloading your torrents, make sure they're illegal, of course. Now this is the download station. I can add a torrent here. We'll go for a Ubuntu torrent because there's no legality issues there. Now the nice thing about this is that the NAS will download it by itself. I can close my laptop, I can close my phone, and the NAS will just do it by itself. I can even set it, schedule it like, hey, only download between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. For example, if you're worried about your torrents interfering with other people on the network. You can have it running in a virtual operating system. So let's say you want to run, I don't know, a version of Windows XP for some reason, for some legacy software, or you want to test out Ubuntu, or you want to have a uh, PHP server, MySQL server, MySQL server, something like that. This can do that as well. It can run virtual operating systems. So this is the virtual machine manager. I have one virtual machine, which is Tiny Core Linux. If we click connect, it will open a new tab and it will give us a graphical interface just as if we were sitting in front of a real computer with a monitor. This also has internet access. If we ping Google, oops, what happened? Okay, there you go. We're getting a response, no problem. So we have this virtual operating system that's running on the NAS and we're accessing it through our web browser. So even if we close our laptop, the virtual machine will still be running, the operating system Linux will still be running, doing whatever we want. So very nice feature to have virtual machines. Just make sure that when you're picking your NAS, check the CPU and the RAM and make sure it's enough for what you want to do, especially if you want to start running more complicated virtual machines. So for the techies out there, you probably already know, right? You know all this stuff. Um, there's so much you can do with a NAS compared to before. It's really like having, uh, you know, a baby computer. Even Plex, I run a Plex server on here, which means from my phone, I can stream content that I've downloaded from this onto my TV using a Chromecast. Now, I don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long, so I'm not gonna get super technical. And I know the techies out there, they're going to, you know, they can just research this themselves or they probably know it already. If you want to install extra apps on the NAS, super easy. You just go to Package Manager, All Packages, and then it will list all the ones available. So you have various different backup options, antivirus for your NAS, cloud sync. Now, this is very interesting actually, because I mentioned earlier about always encrypting your hard drives, but another option you have is to actually back up the data on your NAS to the cloud. So if you're worried about theft or potentially losing all of your drives, then backing up important data to the cloud is another option. Of course, depends on how good your internet connection is, otherwise it might take a long time to back your stuff up. You'll see there's really so many things here, like iTunes server, you can do cloud music, so if you want to run your own like Spotify service for your own family, um, media servers, there's just so much software. Basically, it's like having a computer and everything runs on your NAS, you leave your NAS running 24 hours a day, and uh, yeah, always accessible. It's pretty, pretty cool, really it is. And the NAS doesn't use much power, so it's very efficient. Another important thing actually, and this does matter in the Philippines, 
very large fan on the back some of the NAS that are being sold locally they have a tiny tiny fan not suitable for the Philippines okay you want your hard drives to stay cool because then they're going to last longer if they're overheating they're going to die prematurely now some of you might say hey you didn't even tell us what model it is yet all you said is it's Synology the reason for that is they're all pretty much the same right the differences are it's going to be two bay four bay six bay it's going to handle more drives the other difference will be whether it can support uh, an ssd cache for example now that would be especially important for people that might be doing like uh, maybe a database server directly from the nas you want that snappy snappy access or maybe you're doing video editing directly from the nas so again you want that really fast you know initial pull of data um, other differences are the cpu and the ram now that's important especially for people who are doing transcoding if you're going to use plex and you know that you're going to have a lot of people connecting to your server especially you know maybe your friends from different homes then you want a beefier system so they can handle the transcoding another time when you might be more concerned about the cpu and ram is if you're going to run really heavy virtual operating systems and you want to allocate certain cores certain amount of ram but for the average user really you're just going to care about how many drive bases it come with because they don't sell any how can i put it <laughs> they're not selling low quality versions so pretty much whatever synology you get if you're a home user it's going to do what you expect you can read through the features on the page itself and for the techie guys out there there's no point in me recommending a specific model because you're going to look like does that have enough ram is the cpu okay uh, can it handle this many transcoding things like that so this is more of an overall look at the synology nas architecture or system uh, not specifically about this model and in fact i didn't even want to get too technical that's why i haven't spoken about the exact specifications of this even though you can find them online very easily so hopefully this video explains to you why it's better to have a NAS instead of lots of loose hard drives like this, especially if you have lots of different people storing data, accessing data, sharing data. It's really better to put it in a centralized place that is also backed up, redundant, not loose hard drives like this. So yeah, hopefully it helps you. If not, put your questions in the comment section and I will try to help you. And yeah, big thanks to Seagate and Synology for the freebies. It's made things so much easier for me. I try to store every piece of footage that I shoot. Sometimes I, I lose a little bit of footage. I accidentally delete it, things like that. But mostly I really store everything. And it's coming useful. You know, sometimes people ask me, hey, I need to make a video about, um, I don't know, cleaning the sewers, which sometimes I have so much footage. I don't use it all because, you know, how much can you say about cleaning the sewers but i say yeah sure i've got that footage from like 2019 or whatever just give them the footage and they can make something out of it so yeah it's all about having organized data safe data encrypted data redundant backups and uh, easily accessible thanks for watching